This week on Maker Update, smart dice, a combining of the bits, demonstrating algorithms, a sequin clock, SVG emojis, and the end of particle mesh. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. Hope you're having a great week. I have made some progress on the cocktail robot, and I've made now a dispenser, a 3D printed dispenser with lights inside of it that will react to a cup being placed underneath it with different LED animations. It's pretty cool, it's a little detail, but it's progress. Coding is always so frustrating for me, but it also feels really good when you push through and get something working. I have a great show for you. Let's get started with the project of the week. Pixels Dice is a project by Jean Simonet. These are electronically augmented dice that light up different colors. They know which way they roll. They can connect up to a smartphone app to track what numbers are rolled, configure different light animations, and even sound effects for different numbers. Now, because they have a Kickstarter coming up, these have been making the rounds on tech media as a cool thing to buy. But what keeps getting missed is that this continues to be an open source, wonderfully documented maker made project. The Hackaday project page for this was created in November of 2017 and is filled with incredible build photos of the flex PCBs and the ingenious little inductive charging coils and lipo batteries that they fit inside. The further you dig back, the more inspired you'll be by this maker to market story and maybe even inspired to make something like this for yourself. You can find more information down in the show notes. I think these are going to be a big deal. And I also think it's important that we celebrate and point out that products like this come from our community. Time for some news. The IoT board maker Particle has announced that they will be discontinuing the development of their mesh networking solution, Particle Mesh, as well as their mesh only development board, the Particle Xenon. They will continue manufacturing and supporting their Wi-Fi and cellular boards. In a statement published on their blog, they attribute the decision to both the challenging complexity of mesh networking and the reality that many of their customers were better served by Bluetooth or long range radio for networking between boards. In other news, Adafruit got a tip from one of their readers that a new microbit module is showing up in some promotional material for little bits. The material mentions that the module will be available in spring of this year and should provide a great bridge between these two worlds of educational maker tools. Now for more projects on Instructables, Sam Geyer has a guide on how to make this algorithm demonstration machine. There's a length of 100 addressable LEDs all lit with different colors and you can use the buttons below it to determine which algorithm you'll use to sort those colors. The options include linear search, binary search, bubble sort, insertion sort, quick sort, merge sort, heap sort, and bitonic sort. Tough concepts to explain, made much easier with a tool like this that helps you visualize them. It's no surprise that Sam is a computer science teacher. One detail I thought was interesting is that I initially figured that the circular lights here were a strand of WS2811 LEDs, which have a diffused dome that's built right into them. But when I read the guide, I found he's actually using two flat strips of 2812 with a dense 100 LEDs per meter. What this does is give him the tight spacing he needs, plus the second strip is used to light the little triangles on the top that indicate the sort progress. But in order to diffuse it, he made a 3D printed mask that sits over each LED and gives the light some room to bounce around in. It's a cool idea. For another project where the display steals the show, check out Sequino by Ekagrat Singh Kalsi. This clock uses some of that two-tone sequin fabric that you may have seen on kids' backpacks and shirts. It's fun stuff, but it also makes a cool display medium. It's like a low-tech flip dot. The tricky part is automating it. So what we have here is a sort of CNC roll plotter. The design is 3D printed, and inside you'll find an Arduino Nano, a CNC motor shield, three stepper motors, and a Hall effect sensor and two reflective sensors. It's beautiful and absurd, and I totally want one. Now for a few tips and tools. First, just a note that instead of pausing the DigiKey Maker updates one week out of the month to do our Adafruit edition of the show, we're now doing both. So this week, Tyler Weingartner published our monthly Adafruit edition on Tuesday while you're seeing the usual weekly DigiKey version here that goes up every Thursday. The bottom line is that this year, you're getting even more Maker updates and if you missed this week's Adafruit edition, check out the link down below. Also on YouTube, Adam Savage has a great short video up on his first experiments with vacuum forming back in the 80s. He outlines a technique where you can take an existing object like this bike helmet and then build it up with wet clay to create a unique piece for vacuum forming prototypes. 
Did you ever wish you had a library of emoji symbols as SVG files? Me neither, but Twitter just posted a zip file full of them that you can download and incorporate into your next project. Eric Strebel has a new video up showing his process of going from sketch to functional prototype. You heard me swoon over Jen Schachter's sketch technique last week. Now I get to see Eric's technique. I think the universe is telling me I need to challenge myself to draw more. On the Cool Tools channel, I've got another interview up with Derek Deke Diedrichsen. This time we're talking about his favorite cordless circular saw. As a guy who makes a living building off-grid tiny homes and tree houses, Deke knows what he's talking about. Gareth Brownwin's latest tips, tools, and shop tales newsletter includes a 3D printable bracket from Andrew Lewis that turns aluminum angle stock into shelving, plus an idea from Jake Hildebrandt on using cheap pencil cases to organize the drawer of tangled cables that we all have somewhere. Finally, on the Teaching Tech channel, there's a video overview of some useful rituals to keep your 3D printer running smoothly. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out the latest video from Sean Himmel showing you how to use a Raspberry Pi and a USB microphone to start playing around with TensorFlow Lite machine learning. In the 17 minute video, he walks you through the process of creating a neural network model that can listen for a wake word in real time. It's a fascinating concept to wrap your head around even if you don't have a machine learning project planned yet. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes emailed out to you automatically each week so you never miss a show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for believing in the show and making it possible. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.